So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create a simple wizard in WX Python. So the nice thing about wizards is that they let you um, give the user a way to go through a, a setup process, kind of like how you'd like set up like a config for your your program. So you want to save some settings and that kind of complicated. So you go through a wizard. Another common use case for a wizard would be when you like set up a program and you're like installing it. You see an install wizard, probably the most often of any any type of programming task. So anyway, to create a wizard in WX Python, you've got to use wx.adv for our WX Advanced. You import the wizard, and for this particular tutorial, we're going to use wizard page simple. Once you have your imports figured out, uh, we just need to subclass wizard page simple. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll call this the title page, and we'll use our new wizard class. And then we just need to create our init. And self, parent, and title. Now, a lot of code will still follow the old style of um, instantiating uh, classes with, with WX Python. You could use this or you could use sub, uh, super. It's up to you. We'll use the old style for now. But you can see the new, newer style in some of my other videos. Just kind of show you how to do both that way. So in this particular example, we're going to create a box sizer to hold the widgets that we want in our simple wizard page. So let's see, we want a vertical, a vertical page, or a vertical box sizer, basically. Go ahead and set that sizer to our new sizer. And then I think we'll add some, some more widgets. So let's add a static text, which is basically a label that we can put stuff in into. Let's see, we'll do self, id any, and we'll pass in the title. That'll be the string that gets shown. Let's do set font to something else. So we make it bigger. Use uh, set the font using wx.font. We'll make it an 18 point font and we'll do the Swiss font. Let's see, I think we're on normal here. And bold. Yeah, maybe we'll just skip bold and see if that works. And then we'll do sizer.add our title widget, and we'll align it to the center. And we need to put some space around it, so we'll do a five pixel um, border around this particular widget. And then we'll do a sizer.add, and we'll add a static line which is basically just a line that stretches across the top, across underneath our title, kind of giving it an underline in a way, which you'll see in a minute. And then we need a zero, wx expand, wx.all, and five. Now, to actually make this code work, we'll create a, a main function and in our main main function, we'll create our wizard. This is where we can use the wizard uh, class that we imported. So it's not going to have a parent, so it'll be the the, the top level um, parent, basically top level widget. We'll call it simple wizard, and then we can just add some pages to it. So let's say we have page one equals title page. We'll add it to wizard, which is the parent to this page. We'll call it page one. And then we can just basically copy this code and create several pages. So let's do that. We'll just create it like four or five pages. And then we can just go through and renumber them. And of course we need to give these variable names unique names. All right. So then you do wizard page simple dot chain page one and page two 
And we can copy and paste this one as well. Let's see, we have five pages. Let's make this a little simpler and just do four pages. Okay, so we want to chain, chain one and two together and two and three together. And then three, oops, three and four together. And this just tells us the order the pages should go through as you click the continue, the backwards and forwards buttons or the back and next buttons. So now we should be able to do wizard dot fit to page page one, and then we can do wizard dot run wizard with page one, and that'll show us the wizard with the page one as the first page, and then we can just say wizard dot destroy, which will only happen when the user finishes the wizard or cancels it. So now if we do, um, we set up our code correctly, we can do if name equals main, we can just run this, run this code and see what happens. So let's create our wx.app. And then we'll do our call our main function and then do app.main loop. And I may have done this font wrong, but let's go ahead and try running it and just see if it works correctly. All right, so this is wrong. This one does too many, too many, too many things. Let's just try this. All right, so I think I know what happened here. I think it didn't autocomplete correctly earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and try this one more time. And we'll say normal here. And then wx.bold. Just rerun this. And I think, because I made a typo there, we can get this to work. Boy, autocomplete isn't working for me today. All right, there we go. So there's our, there's our code. If we hit next, we can see that it updates. You can kind of see that, that static line there. It's very faint on Mac. It's more prominent, I believe, on Windows. But basically, when you go through that, it finishes and it closes, and that's how. That's basically just how it works. I wanted to show you that if you hit cancel, it will also destroy the app, and it just ends the way it's supposed to. And this is a really quick and dirty way to create a, a wizard. You could pop up this wizard from your mainframe if you wanted to, in which case the main, the actual wx.frame subclass would own, would be the, would be the, the main widget, the top level widget that you would use. And it would just launch this kind of like it launches a dialog. Like when you, whenever you want to do that, you can ask the user to do whatever you want. You could add some more. Um, text boxes and some combo widgets for them to choose from, and then just save off their data to like a SQLite database or an INI file at the end and when they hit the finish button. I hope this has been useful for you, and let me know if you have any feedback. Thanks for watching.